All right, guys. We've made it to the second round of the regular season best ball playoffs. Everyone is tilting their faces off about players hitting the COVID list and such. <clears throat> so it's time to take a take a little break. Let's talk about some playoff best ball. Obviously, I'm sure most of you guys are aware that Underdog dropped a $5 contest called The Mitten for, for playoff best ball. And it is a little bit different than um, the wild card that has, that has already filled. We'll do a couple of those. We'll do a couple of those drafts here in just a second. Like I said, we can keep our minds off of how bad you need AJ Brown tonight. How bad you need Debo Samuel, how much Alexander Madison you have. Will Tyreek or Kelsey play too much anarchy. Top in a couple drafts. Stop worrying about, stop worrying about, about those teams. So the, the most interesting thing I think <clears throat> that underdog has done with these NFL playoff best ball contests, taking a step back, I guess we talked about this on the last stream. If you haven't watched, if you haven't watched, go to the, to the YouTube channel. And there's, there's been a couple actually, I've done a couple of playoff draft streams already. What's interesting about what underdog has done is they've taken this, this playoff best ball format, right? You draft 10 teams, uh, or you draft 10, 10 rounds in six-man drafts, so 10 players. Your starting lineup is in typical best ball, right? You don't pick your starters. One quarterback, two running back, or one, excuse me, one quarterback, one running back, two wide receivers, and a flex. Two wide receivers slash tight ends, and a flex, and, and bench spots. You play the wild card round, then you play the divisional round, then you play the conference championship round, and you make it to the Super Bowl. Then we pay out this this payout structure, and you have to obviously advance through your groups each time. The mitten is a, a smidge different in that two out of six. I can share my screen. If we click on the mitten here, so obviously we see also crazy. It's twenty five percent filled. <laughs> 25% filled already. I imagine they'll have another one, <clears throat> I think, based on how this is going. We'll see. We'll see how quick it fills. Um, so obviously you see the payout structures here with 15K to first out of a out of a hundred. So it ends up getting pretty darn flat after, you know, from second on down. So that's pretty nice. Obviously, here's what we talked about. You know, you do the wild card, etc. Trying to scroll down to all rules so we can share that. I can share that really quick. Let me share that rules. So uh, 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 uh. at the end of round one, the top two players from your six man draft advance, right? And then the top one out of a uh, top one advance, the next one, and then obviously top one and you get into a final a final 94 man field. So you get down to, I mean, again, take a step back, trying to read this and talk it. It's not, not easy reading, reading this fine print. So you, the top two from your six man draft, we're going to do these six man drafts, right? The top two from your six man drafts advance into eight man groups. In that eight man group, you have to win it in the divisional round. You will then advance into 10 man groups. You have to win that, right? Top one. You have to win that. And then you'll there will be 94 total entries in the Super Bowl. And so what I think to this question, what I think with, with the smaller field size, as well as how much easier it is to get out of the first round, there's also... Uh, not a lot of payoff in simply advancing out of the first round. I believe you get six dollars. <laughs> I believe that's the. Uh, I believe that's the payout. I can go back to my, to my other uh, other screen here. I believe you get six dollars if you uh, make it out. Something like that. Sorry, scrolling around too much here. Yeah. So basically, you make it out of the first round, you get $6, if you can see here. 
there's like no there's like no advantage to like just advancing versus like I believe the gauntlet is like you have to win it you have to win that six man group and you get double your money. We talked about this on the last stream where I think it's fairly silly to play a contest that's this top heavy, you know, um, plays out over the course of a month has 11% rake, blah, 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 to try to double your money. There's a lot of other ways in the on the planet that we can all try to double our money in a more eff effective manner. However, you know, there's reasons to maybe try to advance a little bit, you know, focus on advancing a, just a smidge more in those. In this, in the mitten, I really think, you know, you, you don't have to go crazy, but I think setting yourself up for the correlation and the benefits of the correlation throughout throughout the, the the tournament particularly obviously in the Super Bowl is even is even more important we could have a conversation about given that you have to finish first out of six in other formats particularly the gauntlet that you 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 know maybe in the seventh round or you know the eighth or ninth round you take whatever Justin Jefferson to help you to help you get through and then you know if you get lucky and the Vikings win a game awesome you know, as a one-off, but in this, I think it's even more important to make sure that we're focusing on this, this correlation and such. Um, and the smaller the field, I actually think that makes it even more impactful. We are, we are, we are trying, we're obviously talking about playing, playing for first. Actually, I want to bring up this comment because this is five, five, six, four is really an interesting an interesting way to think about it. I am personally not doing a lot of five, five, six, four teams, but I absolutely think that you you might actually be able to do it in this versus um, <clears throat> other contests, particularly the gauntlet. I but I but I am doing a little bit more of super stacking, you know, Super Bowl outcomes and playing for a lot, a little bit more outlier outcomes, especially with maybe some lower owned teams. So I do think we can, you know, if you want to talk about being crazy or whatever, I'm not, I'm not adjusting my approach a ton for this because I, I think I'm generally really trying to attack getting first place and winning the Super Bowl, you know, winning in the Super Bowl, setting myself up for kind of if that lineup hits, how do I have my the best shot once we get once we get to the Super Bowl? But I think there's a bunch of different ways to to go about that, and in this, in the mitten in particular. I think the correlation and everything is even more important. Even more important. Sorry. So I'm stuck in my damn teeth. So let's, it's easier to uh, football. Yes. Football's back. Finally. I mean, we had a long break this week, yesterday. Um, from a, what is the max? Good question before we dive in. What is the max amount of players you think is okay to draft from a first round? by team that is a great question so two-part answer the first part is a little bit of a cop-out since we don't know as it stands right now who the buys are as i'm as i'm drafting right now i don't care i'm not i'm, I'm honestly not really even thinking about the buys that much um if i lose a five dollar team or multiple five dollar teams because i end up with only uh you know i don't end up with enough guys in in the first round or i end up with you know uh a single quarterback from a bot. I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice that basically. I'm, I'm comparing it to, uh, and this is going to sound bad because these guys were absolute stone cold busts in the regular season, but it was like the Trey Lance thing. Some people didn't want to risk Trey Lance um, because we didn't know when he would start. Right. And obviously we saw this year play out. You were dead. You know, the, the Trey Lance shares were, were, were dead, but I was willing to, um, accept that risk on guys that may like him fields, whatever may not even play. And, but, but because the payoff was there, in my opinion, I was willing to, to take that shot as it stands right now. I'm also willing to accept that risk. Uh, maybe a better comparison is like injury risk, right? Drafting early in, in BBM drafting in May and BBM, you open yourself up to cam Akers, JK Dobbins, Gus Edwards, Michael Thomas, you open yourself up to all of that, but I'm willing to punt off those teams in order to hopefully access a team that kind of gets lucky on ADP, right? Gets lucky on injuries or whatever, and creates a a little bit of a of a super team. 
that's kind of what I'm doing here, right? Like if I have the Chiefs, I'm, you know, I'm let's just let's just see if the Chiefs can not get the buy, right? Or whatever. Now, in turn, later, later when uh we know when it's like pretty much just locked in who has the buys when it's locked in who who has the buys i will be a lot more cognizant of that and i will probably be you'll see probably as we get into these drafts i'm constantly thinking about my like mini my, my mini stacks on the side in general i'm trying to get four four players from the main team that i'm targeting right that that's the one super bowl bet i'm making four players and then figure out exactly how the mini stacks on the side could be could be another team with four and a team with two could be two teams with three players could be three. I, I actually really like the four plus two plus two plus two. Right. So then I have three different teams in the opposite conference with two players can be, that can be three options for the Super Bowl. but relative to the first round buy thing, it, I, I would definitely want to be more on the um, lesser side, right. Mini, min, min, mini stacking those guys um, of, of the first round buy teams. Or I want to be going like, like if I get three or four from, from, from that team, I want to do it with another team. So let's say chiefs, I get the chief stack right now. I'm going to get an, another stack probably from, from the NFC. I also think you can double stack NFC, a, AFC teams to get you through that first round and then pair up, um, you know, pair up like another team. So I, I just need basically, one combination of first round teams to get me through, particularly in this, we only have to get in the top two out of six, right? So if the Chiefs get the buy, crap, my Mahomes, Tyreek, uh, CEH, Pringle team is dead because you, you you almost can't get Mahomes, Tyreek, and Kelsey. If I, you know, th- I got four guys that are out in this first round. Now I need to find the six that are playing in that first round that give me enough upside to continue to advance while also still fitting in the correlation and the, the Super Bowl type type stuff. So it might be all, all NFC teams in those other six, those other six. And then I get, you know, I get my my quarterback from say the, the Rams don't get the buy, right? And Stafford's a bad example. Uh maybe like the Niners are actually not the worst, worst, worst example. It's Jimmy G. Right. I actually saw Paul in chat, Paul in the discord talking about the saints. I think the saints are a little bit interesting Vikings as well with Kirk cousins. You can get like the best players on some of these offenses, including the quarterbacks super late that you would be able to then pair with, with the chiefs and like the 49ers can make the super bowl and that would give you outs to that. Right. But then that you, you're still getting the Chiefs. So threading that needle, it's uh, that, that, uh, that's the phrase I'm um, I'm basically coining for these playoff tournaments. It's all about threading threading that needle. You obviously, in theory, want as many players in the Super Bowl as you can possibly get. But you also have to have a reasonable enough projection week to week to be able to continue advancing, not just through the first round, right? But through the, the next two are the tough ones. Second and third round are the tough ones. So threading that needle on projection and, and correlation is – is, is really where that's this, that's, that's this whole game. That's this whole game. Well, um, looks like, Oh, we're full. Okay. Let me zoom out a little bit here. This damn screen. Sorry. Computer is uh there we go. Not cooperating. Now let me zoom in a little, back in a little bit. <clears throat> okay. Is one QB a good strategy in this or is getting a QB? So I'll give you my personal preference on how I typically attack these. I tend to prefer one quarterback. Um, obviously, if you have a quarterback on by, you can't do that. And obviously I'm opening myself up to risk of single quarterback getting the buy right now because we because it is it is unforeseen. I think we have a decent idea of some teams that like are almost drawing dead to get the buy, which I think you should, you can feel safe about, about single quarterback. And I think the most upside in any team is, is single quarterback with a quarterback that has a, a good chunk of, of upside as well as probably floor. 
So one QB is my personal preference. You can also absolutely have one Q, you, you can go two QBs, one, one from each conference. Something I think that you can also do is two QBs from a single, from, 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 so like, let's say one of my favorite examples would be in the NFC, actually. Let's say you bet on the Patriots to win the Super Bowl. Or, whoa, Mahomes 101. I was not expecting that. Um, I am going to take Cup. Uh, I was not expecting Mahomes to go one on one, so that's interesting. Uh, you can you can one QB, like I said, I think it's my preference. You can of course try to set up a, a Super Bowl stack. What I think I've grown to like, not prefer, but you can absolutely stack two quarterbacks from let's say the NFC. So I just took Cooper Cup. I get Matthew Stafford and Dak, and I and I play for that basically NFC conference championship game and i'm basically guaranteeing myself to get you know one of the two nfc teams through and then i i play the patriots on the other side right mac jones not super exciting and it doesn't have to be just the patriots either could be the could be the titans could be the colts honestly it could be anyone it could be the the even the even someone like the chiefs even though that's not reasonable to get via adp but just assume my quarterback is coming from this from, from this conference and then assume my bring backs in the Super Bowl are coming from this conference. I think that, that that's what makes this game fun. There's so many fun ways, fun ways to, uh, to construct your team. And there's, there, I mean, we talk about regular season best ball, not having any, you know, not being like quote unquote solved this. I think that there's a million different ways that you can, you can, you know, slice and dice this. Last year, I think uh, we saw a four-four-three or a four-three-three three three team win. I think that's what it was. Four-three-three. Three. If you remember, oof. Cup. Let me think about this. We are gonna go Austin Eckler. I've been. Uh, one thing also in these drafts that I think is like maybe one of the most shining examples of things to consider is the fact that running back is so bad, particularly on the best teams, right? Chiefs, I mean, you, you have CEH, but like, okay, JT is the best running back, but he's on a team that, you know, is fairly low probability to advance. And so... Uh, even like the Cowboys, right? I really, really, I'm really, really bullish on the Cowboys. The Cowboys are actually one of the teams I want to target the most personally in this. And it's Zeke and Pollard, like not super clear cut. Even like the Patriots, who I also want to target, particularly because they're cheap. I mean, I would guess that Kittle. Wow. That is an interesting, interesting start. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and get my, I've been doing, actually, I've been doing so much Eckler Keenan trying to just think this through on the clock here. If there's a, a different like permutation here, cause I have cup. Um, we're just going to take Keenan cause I don't have anything off the top of my head as a pivot. Yeah. This start, this start is a good one. The LA bull, it sets up well, right? So it's definitely not going to be like, Crazy unique, but I think there there are things you can do as as we draft to get there. But I like I like that. I also like having pairs, um, just like that. Like you ha you can be adaptable as this draft goes on, right? Like I don't have my quarterback yet. You know, in theory, I'm pretty pretty certain I'm going to want either Herbert or Stafford. But like, it. it as long as I have my correlations and everything set up, you can be okay as long as you're adapting as this, as this, this draft is going on. So I'm, I want to set up like the LA teams are two are definitely two of my favorites. Yeah. Chargers are probably my favorite when we include cost. Sadly, please don't, please don't throw, please don't get upset with me, but the, I kind of like the Titans. Um, Derek Henry has gotten a lot more expensive. As we see here, ADP of 19.4, so a 3-4 turn pick. 
which was not the case before. And AJ Brown's gotten steamed up a little bit too, but I like that. I like the Titans. Um, if JT were cheaper, I would like the Colts, um, but the chiefs are so expensive. The bills, I have a lot of the bills because it's so easy to get those late bills guys. Um, but the chargers, I agree would be, would be my favorite. The Rams, Rams and the Cowboys. Those right now are the three teams I've been um, probably stacking, stacking the most. And then just like rotating. Let's see there, there's, there's Stafford. And see, I like this. Yeah, we're going to go Stafford over, over Herbert because I got uh, something I want to look at at this next pick that I think will make sense. I guess I could have done it, could have done either or here. Could have done Stafford and tried to get Mike Williams, or sorry, Stafford and uh, try to get Odell here, or uh, Herbert and try to get Mike Williams to set to set that up. The good thing that good is probably not the right word. the The thing I do like about the Rams is they do have some cheaper options. Sony is cheap. Henderson is falling. So like, I prefer Sony, but you know, we still got a still got a month before. The playoffs hit a lock and change. Uh, so I'm not going to get anchored to a take off two Sony games. Um, now I have to take Odell, though. And I really like Odell here. You know, it's like a fifth round pick. I think Odell is an awesome pick. So these LA teams just set up these, these, uh... yeah. The, so the, so I, I've done, I've, I've done this too. Definitely, definitely done done this too. I think a little bit of the problem picking on, on, on the turn is you can absolutely push it with both of, with both of those, those QBs. The problem for me with this is the only benefit that there is to ADP value is getting some combination of, uh, of a team here that like I, I technically can't get later. Right. And honestly, in this range, Amari, I guess I'm, I'm not all that excited about the Ravens. I guess we could say that I could get, uh, I could double dip the Ravens. Um, AJ Brown and Julio, right. But you're not sacrif You're not even really sacrificing. It's not like a regular draft. I do absolutely see your point, but it's not like a, a regular draft where like, Oh, if I, if I let the room see if they're going to let Justin Herbert fall to me, I'm going to get, you know, some sick, 80 ADP value. Um, yeah, see, and that's where I, uh, I go back and forth. I go, I go, I go back and forth on it. I think that's, that's absolutely, absolutely viable. You could also, but you could also make the case is like, if nobody has, if nobody has Keenan and Eckler in theory, they shouldn't take Mike Williams either. So, but so why, like, why, why do I only let the room decide? You know, I definitely understand what you're saying, um, but it's an interesting kind of thing, and I'm always, I'm tending to side with really not caring about these, these ADP picks. I also uh, have more to uh, spoiler. I have more Herbert than I have than I have Stafford, um, and I like. I think I talked about this last time. I like a lot more of, uh, Ooh, Andrews actually is semi interesting. Let me think about this now. I can set up my Patriots. So one thing that I have talked, I am actually going to take Damien. I've talked a lot about is I, I like uh, a lot more of four plus two plus two plus two, as opposed to four, three, three or four, four, two or, or, or whatever. I do a lot more four plus two plus two plus two. Cause I feel like I know some people disagree, but I feel if I get my teams to the final with six guys, I feel confident that I'm live. There's also ways at the ends of drafts that I can get unique with those guys. So um, I like, I like attaching on some lower owned players, particularly in pairs, whether it's lower owned teams or lower owned individual players into all these, into all these combinations. Um, see, I think, I don't think that there's that much, there's that, there's that much of a difference. Uh, let me double check this really quick. If I want, 
Got my got my two chargers, Damian. I can wait on the second Patriot. I gotta decide if I want. I'm gonna take uh, or if I want Knox. No, let's do yeah. Let's do Van. Um I totally get uh preferring preferring this in in the gauntlet. I will say I think uh the it's easier to advance in this is only relative to that that first round right the two out of six versus versus one out of one out of six and have th those that threading of the needle is where you get in that two plus two plus two you give yourself still nearly max upside nearly max first place equity nearly while upping your projection right as in those first in those first couple couple definitely have the the four three three thing is getting you know in theory getting some one last thing right which i do like that and i definitely have have those teams too um but the the other thing i like about setting up for a four two 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 is it allows you to pivot from that if you start right if i like what i have here i can turn i can absolutely turn this into four three three is it as good the chargers are not an optimal example of that because we're talking about like jared cook or josh palmer you know some, somebody like that which is gross but you can easily maintaining that that structure of going in with four two two allows you to maintain that flexibility to build out any of those structures. You can go four, four, two, you, you can do all sorts. You can go five, right? But the only way to maintain that flexibility is going in with keeping that flexibility alive. It's kind of how I have ultimately landed on. It's the only way I can keep max flexibility here. So now my question is, I'm trying to think about the third or if, or if I do do your guys' favorite 4-3-3 or 4-4-2, go Patriots. Patriots. Um, I need to – I'm actually going to do the, the – I think, Harbs, you mentioned. I'm going to do the Bengals one. I'm going to do the Bengals one. Kittle's a good one. I like Kittle. The 49ers are great ones. The 49ers are some of the best – I have a bunch of Debo. I think I, th I think I prefer Debo to Kittle, but we're splitting hairs, right? Debo, Kittle, Eli Mitchell, a little bit of Ayuk. They're an awesome mini, or or, or like you said, one offs. Um, I, I I'm very anti anti one off in general because I can just add the second guy on all of these teams, right? Like, which speaking of, I want to. Oh shit! Is mixing gone? Oh, that's bad. Uh, okay, so that makes me if Mixon is gone, I need to take Sony to make sure I have running back fudge. I definitely screwed this up, I think. Let me think about this. Yep, screwed this up. It should have been. I thought Mixon was there, so here's another thing. I definitely screwed this up, but that's okay. Chase can be my one off. I was not gonna draft a Rams running back. Right. So I needed, I wanted all three of my AFC teams to swoop around with a running back. And I was not paying attention because I was talking to you guys thinking Mixon would be that. Like, am I betting on the Bengals to make the Super Bowl? No, of course not. But crazy shit happens in, in, in this league all the time. And so it allowed me to do Chase Mixon. And then I would have, then I would bring this back with another, with another Patriot. So I screwed that up. So when it says in the title, how to win in this, don't do exactly what I did. Um, how much Jared Cook do you have? I, I definitely would not call uh, Jared Cook a staple. And I think he's an interesting one. Um, I have a little bit of bias. I admit towards Jared Cook, he stinks. He's very bad at football. He has shown absolutely zero upside, no matter who is in, out, matchup, anything. So I, I struggle a little bit with 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 guys like him and I really 
I mean, the reason we really, really like the Chargers is those three dudes, right? So um, I have a, I've sprinkled Cook, and it, but it's mostly uh, out of panic as opposed to out of uh, looking looking to take him. I think I've taken him once or twice. I don't. I think they'll play Steven Anderson. I don't think anything matters for Cook. Cook Cook's role is Cook's role. Parham was playing. Uh, Parham wasn't playing a, a, a ton anyway, and they got Steven Anderson, who they've played in the past. I don't think it matters a ton. And Parham, Parham, Parham's not guaranteed to be out for the playoffs, is he? Just had a concussion. Yeah, that's there's a. I want to talk about threading, threading the needle, threading the needle on attaching guys because you want to maximize you know, the correlation and maximize guys that you, you can get through to the Super Bowl versus taking guys that have like, like zero chance, zero chance of helping you. And I, I'm not, I'm, there goes Higgins. Okay. Uh, definitely Jamar Chase one off. Let me queue up. All right. So this is where I got to take a little bit lower on guy, I think, and go born and go Kendrick born. Well, this didn't work out perfectly, but we get Rams Chargers or Rams Patriots Super Bowl. And technically, technically, Rams Bengals Super Bowl. I would still have five guys so I could field a roster, but you would need a, a 42 to 10 uh, Rams Rams win. Which actually, quick side, side, you know, diatribe or whatever, is if if you, no matter what you do, you are technically live if you can fill the five man roster spot, right? So the talk about uh, uh, what what did James say about where's Kittle? Talk about like prioritize, prioritizing Kittle even as a one off. If you have four guys in this with attached to that AFC quarterback you're talking about, if you have four guys and you can fill all the positions, it still works. Oh my lord! Well. All right, now I gotta draft another one because I just drafted Sony Michelle. Literally just drafted Sony Michelle. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna take Acres. You guys don't don't take Acres. I'm gonna take Cam Acres in this one. All right, I'm in. Five more. We need five more. That is seriously hilarious. That is seriously hilarious. What funny timing. We're talking about the Rams and we're talking about exactly how to combine all these teams. And I literally just talked about how I like Sony. We're figuring out all these different constructions and uh, all my Sony and Henderson teams. <laughs> Between Godwin. Between Godwin, maybe Fournette. I'm assuming that Fournette is going to be back. But like we also don't know that for sure. Between Godwin, Fournette, and now the Rams running backs, what's next? Who's going down? Who who is going down next? That's gonna ruin all the drafts that I've done, which I haven't done a ton yet. Luckily, there somebody somebody said I put so I posted I only got one BBM team through we won't make this a season long thing but we can talk about it for a second I got one BBM team through one out of I didn't max it but like one out of 110 or something like that to the second round and I posted it on Twitter or whatever people are replying with like their teams or how they did or whatever which is always fun and one person said I only got one team through and it's an acres team imagine that team I don't think it you know we're a couple days away from from the game, Acres is not going to play uh, this. Well, I wouldn't. I, I assume Acres is not going to play this week. But like, if Acres comes back for the championship, for the cha can you imagine? Can you imagine a Cam Acres team? A Cam Acres having two touchdowns in the championship and winning Best Ball Mania. Imagine, imagine uh, all us idiots, all us idiot streamers trying to tell people strategy and all that when the real answer was to draft the dude who tore his Achilles during the summer. And he was the league winner. So for this, there we go. See, somebody's got one. So for this, um, I'm still not avoiding. I'm still not avoiding 
the the Rams backfield, but there's certainly I, I think what I'm going to do personally, this is literally obviously I just heard this in real time, the same as as you guys did. OK, first of all, I'm going to do something a little bit different here, I think. Uh, I have so much, but you know what? You know who I've taken literally zero of Jonathan Taylor. I've taken zero Jonathan Taylor. So we're going to do JT, JT and Eckler and set. I know now I'm going to have to get a cheaper, a cheaper NFC stack, but I'll fill, I'm going to use the running back spot from the AFC, whether it's these two teams or adding in a third, obviously Um, just take a bully the room on, on, on the top end, the top end running backs. Um, so anyway, what I said I was going to do before I came on the clock is <clears throat> I'm going to sprinkle some acres in. I already, I already have some. So I, I wish, well, I don't, now I don't know if I wish I got more Sony and Henderson in, um, but I'm going to sprinkle some acres in because uh, just because he's, he's going to be lower owned, right? It's 25% filled. Some people still probably won't take him. Like he still probably won't go uh, in, in a lot of these and, What's it matter? I'm willing to burn five dollars if Acres comes back. Uh, if Acres c- comes back and is you know uh, the leader in the backfield, not a ton or anything like that, but I'll sprinkle some in. I've taken worse guys. I'm taking Devin Singletary. What's the difference? Not over yet. Not over yet. Make like guys can still get activated. That's what I keep telling myself, at least. That's what I keep telling myself. Optimism. So the running back thing is something I, I feel like I keep finding myself doing. A lot of people, there's two ways, I guess. Running back is such an important position. And there's two ways I like to think about the running back thing. I think the simplest, easiest way, and maybe the most logical way, is including the running back in your your main stack, right? That's why we were just talking about all these Rams guys. Stack the Rams, pick one of the running backs, and and toss them in, because then you've got the running back position filled in the Super Bowl. One way I've been doing it just a little bit differently is stacking without that running back and making sure all my mini stacks have the running back. Right. That's why another this four, two, two or four, three, three, making sure that like in this instance, both of my AFC teams have running backs or you could even do, you know, we talked about the stacking in the same conference and just using your bring backs. Right. If I do, if I were to do, I'm not going to do that on this team because I don't think it makes sense. Oh, man, that would have been sweet if CD, if CD came back. Okay. Oops. Siri, Siri heard me and didn't. Uh... Ooh, what about a Ram stack without Stafford? Who... No, 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 no. We're going to do. Oh, no. Ha. Here we go. We're going to bully this room on running backs. I was set up. I was. I'm sure that you could see that I was setting up the Dallas. So, spoiler alert. One reason I like doing that, like hammering some of these uh, AFC running backs early, is because I don't particularly want to take Zeke Pollard as whatever. But I, you can load up on the the Dallas stack, right? Dak, CD, CD. You might have to take a little bit earlier, but. CD, Amari, Gallup, even Schultz in these mid to late rounds. So you can still get your Dallas stack. You can throw on Pollard, of course, if you want to as well. Um, and then play your play your AFC teams there up, up at the top, you know, through those mini, those mini stacks, secondary stacks, where you get the elite AFC running back. Um, pretty much. Pretty much. 
Yeah, he goes to he goes at like around the one two turn or whatever. I just took him at the one at the one two turn. I think it's like the first JT team I've taken second, maybe second. I don't take JT very much either. Um, the other thing about JT is like it's just him and Pittman really. As like you're pretty much wasting a roster spot probably on you know the Zach Pascals and stuff of the world. So even like the mini stack is uh is a little bit kind of tougher. You know what I mean? So I think that's it's a combination of of those things. Yeah, I what I will say <clears throat> is I think that they can uh I don't want to have zero JT. I literally forced him in this draft because I think it's unwise to completely fade JT. I mean, this team just beat the shit out of the Patriots. They can beat the Bill. Who name it? Who can't the Colts beat? I'm not. I'm not expecting them to do it by any stretch of the imagination. But they can win, and if they win and make a run, even like to the conference championship, JT is going to be uh, a total smash and can be a key in at least like getting you to the Super Bowl. So I, I'm not like full fading. So now Stafford and Odell are here, but I'm pretty sure I am going to be. We'll see. I'm just going to queue him up. Such an interesting thinking about because Amari is gone too. This is so weird. Actually, here we go. Rams without Cup. Rams are going to get to the Super Bowl and Cooper Cup is going to get shut down by one of my three teams. How's that one? How's that? How many Stafford without cup teams are there in this? Yeah, like none. Um, I, I do probably need to add some Rams here. To the queue, we're just gonna add all of these guys. Where's this acres in here? <laughs> That is great. Wow. It really has been incredible. I love how I threw an entire wrench I'm doing a freaking NFL playoff best ball stream. And it turned into discussing should we draft a guy who tore his Achilles in the summer? How is that possible? What are we doing? What? <laughs> Insane. Insane. Six picks away. I don't think this is going to work out like I was hoping it would work out, but we'll see. Got a couple backdoor options, I think. Let's see here. Yeah, the other thing about JT, I've been thinking a lot about JT lately is in the in this in these contests is like I think he goes too high for the Colts probability of making a run. But the payoff of him in these contests if the Colts make a run is so freaking high that I want like I said I want to have I want to have some of him you know what I mean? This team is going to be hilarious. Please, please don't, please don't screw me. All right, sweet. So now I get my, <clears throat> I get my Titans, right? I need to finish off the Titans. I need AJ Brown. To finish off the Colts, I need Michael Pittman. And then uh, we're just going <laughs> to draft <laughs> whatever Rams the, the uh, the field is going to give me here. I like this team. Well, assuming you guys don't uh, take all my Rams, uh, I uh, I like this team much better than than the other one. Clearly, I was uh, not paying close enough attention when I started stacking up. Uh, 
James, did you take the were you were you who took uh C D? Yeah, see C D Amari C D Amari Pollard Dak is such a fun one. And then you obviously get it with with Mahomes. You've got your 49ers secondary stack. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. D Weiss, our guy D Weiss with the Bucks, Ravens, Green Bay. Bucks, Ravens, Green Bay. That's fun. Oh. Never thought I would be depressed that someone took Tyler Higby from me. But here we are. Or Tyler Higby. Got mush brain. If one of you guys takes Tyler Higby, we are going to actually have a problem. But I was really hoping uh, Van would get back here. Definitely would prefer Van on this team. If, you're, if, you're, if this team was able to get Van Higby here instead of Higby and one of these running backs. But I did say I was going to take Akers. So uh, I'm a man of my word. Tyler Higby. And the first, the first Cam Akers team in the mitten. The first Cam Akers team. There it is. Rams make the Super Bowl, play one of the Colts, Chargers, or Titans, and Cooper Cup duds. And Cooper Cup duds. And, and Cam Akers comes back on a torn Achilles and catches a touchdown pass from Matthew Stafford. They say your lineups need to tell a story in these tournaments. This one is telling a nightmare, probably a ridiculous fairy tale is what this one is, is telling, but it is a story, an absurd, awful, Improbable fairy tale, but a story nonetheless. That's fun. It does, it does like kind of speak to the point. Like, who knows how this who knows how this stuff is gonna wrap up? So just get, get yourself a bunch of combinations of all these different players, right? And all these and all these different teams. Um Pringle and uh Daryl Williams. So one thing I will say about the running backs, I, le I actually lean a little bit more to running backs than I think people would think that I would. Or maybe that uh, like others do. And, and not like necessarily over the wide receivers. A lot of the wide receivers are guys that I, that I prefer. But like the handcuff type running backs have a little more value than I think people will give credit for here because... It's like if CEH gets hurt, basically, is what I'm saying, right? It's kind of like when we were drafting it, when we draft handcuffs running back, handcuff running backs in season long. You know, I when we drafted, and I'm, this hasn't worked out very well uh, at, over the last couple of weeks. But when we drafted Daryl Henderson, you're 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 getting a huge payoff if Cam Akers goes down, right? You draft Tony Pollard, you're getting a huge payoff if Zeke goes down. We are. Not only – there's still three regular season games before this tournament even starts, and then over the course of the playoffs, that could happen, right? Daryl Williams was a really valuable fantasy asset. He has way more fantasy upside than Byron Pringle does if something were to happen to CEH. Obviously, if you have CEH, I don't want Daryl Williams as well. But, right, Tony Pollard has more a fantasy upside than Dalton Schultz, you know, if something were to happen to Zeke, maybe – Maybe, maybe not, you know, if Zeke is in there, but I'm kind of like thinking through that and I, I'm willing to take more dives on some of these crappy running backs, basically. AJ Dillon, another, another example, right? Uh, the Cardinals guys, other, other examples that like we saw what James Conner is without Chase Edmonds, the, the opposite could end up being true, right? If James Conner is actually hurt right now, James Conner goes down, Chase Edmonds is the workhorse, et cetera, et cetera. So I think those are just small little nuances that are not, not crazy important but um i am taking those into account as well while everyone else is drafting the crappy you know fourth wide receiver 
And I draft some of them too. I mean, shit, I just took Tyler Higby. Um, but, you know, thinking about a, l- a little bit of that, like we're a month away from any of the, any of this even matter, even mattering. And I mean, shit, we don't know who's going to play on Sunday because of like COVID and injuries and stuff. What, what, what's going to change over the course of the next, of the next month. So, um, all right, guys, this, this was awesome. I got to run. I am trying to figure out exactly when we'll be back next week. going to try to fire off a bunch more of these leading up, leading up to, to the actual playoffs. So Monday or Tuesday, let's call it Monday or Tuesday. Maybe we'll do a combo stream on Monday of sweating out our best ball teams and doing some of these drafts before, before, before Monday night football. Um, And then, like I said, uh, pretty much every week, multiple times leading up to the actual playoffs, we'll be doing more of these. I'm sure there'll be more contests. We'll get into, uh, if you haven't seen, they also launched a big mitten, I believe, which is like their big dog version of uh, 0% full, zero entrance. Maybe we can, maybe we can get a a bunch of people to get together and do uh, one of, one of the big mittens, but we'll hit up all of these. If you're not in the discord, make sure to get in the discord spikeweek.com, go to the header, go to discord, drop you into the 100% free place to come hang out with all of us sick degenerates, sweating out best ball all year long and doing all these drafts. Um, But this will be the last stream before Christmas. I hope you guys have a great holiday. Um, It's been awesome sweating all of this with you. Hopefully your weekend, your weekend goes great. I'll see you in the discord. Have a Merry Christmas guys. Talk to you later. See ya.